Hello YouTube! First I'd like to thank everyone who for the feedback, comments, subscriptions to the channel. It's been amazing that I already got past the 5000 subscribers mark and this wouldn't be possible without your help. I really hope that you are enjoying your games without the drift anymore, without having to send your joy-cons for repair and having to wait for a long time to get them back and keep playing. And while it's still early to talk about the fix, as more and more people will be testing and reporting back their results, I would like to answer a few questions I get frequently. The first question asks, isn't it better to just send your Joy-Cons to Nintendo to get the sticks replaced? Well, if your Joy-Cons are covered by warranty and your country have access to Nintendo's official assistance, then yes, it's better to send it to Nintendo especially because the Joy-Cons are very fragile and it's easy to break or strip the screws if you're not careful enough. However, we have to consider two things. If you have customized or special edition Joy-Cons, you might not receive them back, as I said on the last video. And at some point, your new Joy-Cons will start to drift again, unless Nintendo apply the fix themselves. So from now on it's very important to keep sharing the video until we make sure that this will reach Nintendo themselves and they will fix the future revisions of the Joy-Cons or start applying the fix to any Joy-Cons they receive to, to replace. And someday the Switch will be discontinued and Nintendo won't offer free repairs for it anymore. So if you want to keep your Switch for the long run, you should definitely learn how to do this. The next question is, is it dangerous to put cardboard or paper on my Joy-Cons? Won't this start a fire or something? Well, definitely no. First because the Joy-Con doesn't generate any kind of heat that could potentially start a fire. And second that the Joy-Con battery voltage is just a little bit more than your regular AA batteries. And third is that the Joy-Con already has foam and other flammable materials inside. So if you are still worried that it might start a fire or something, you can use one or two strips of electrical tape since it's made for electronics or you could use a playing card that also helps and it's made of plastic so it should do the trick and not represent any kind of harm for your joy-cons and do not in any kind of way put aluminium foil or any anything else conductive in your joy-cons it won't catch fire but definitely it can short circuit your joy-con and fry it permanently and the last question I'm gonna answer is can this fix potentially increase the deterioration of the Joy-Con stick? Well, for this one I'm gonna show you some videos. I've seen people doing this fix with really thick pieces of cardboard or plastic and I don't recommend this. When you close the Joy-Con it will start to bulge and the plastic might deform over time or even crack. I know that the media is saying cardboard everywhere, but the fix is just a 1mm piece of paper, don't overdo it. You are looking to just get enough pressure to push the metal plate back to its original position. Too much pressure and it may even start to become concave, and this will affect the reading too. The best way to get it right is to start with thin pieces and if it doesn't fix, add more layers and test it again with each new layer. When the drift stops, you're good to go. You see, the pressure is not the problem, and dust is not the problem either. The real pro problem is the metal plate. Let me show you an example. Here in the 3DS circle pad, you can see that you are constantly applying pressure when you are playing with it, making all kinds of movements, and if you take the cap out, you can see there's plenty of space for dust to get inside as this, its mechanical parts are way more exposed than the Joy-Cons. So dust getting inside the analog stick is not a problem. The Joy-Cons even have a, a rubber cover to protect it from dust. So it's really not that problematic to get dust inside it. 
Here's the mechanism in action from on the iFixit video. You can even see that the prongs are very similar to the switch. And it also has a graphite pad, just like the switch. I'm not saying that the graphite pads will never wear with the pressure. They will sometimes degrade with the friction, but this material is very durable, and depending on the user, it will last for generations. My own launch 3DS works flawlessly to this day, and I never replaced the circle pad. So these were the most asked questions about the fix. In the next video I will talk about what kinds of videos I plan to bring in the future. But I'd like to listen to your opinion. What kind of content do you want to see on the channel? Leave your ideas in the comments. Also, I'd like to give a big shout out to my first Patreon, Douglas Strong. With your help, I'll be able to recover some of the expenses I had while pursuing this solution and keep making more content to this channel in the future. Thank you very much.